Well, as I said, there is much to discuss with Professor David Flint about constitutional matters this week. Where do we start? There's the voice to Parliament, the Federal Integrity Commission, and of course the most ambitious constitutional proposal of all, the Republic. Many of these constitutional changes will potentially undermine the checks and balances that have kept our Federation on a reasonably even keel through enormous challenges, including two world wars, economic depression, and the sacking of a financially paralyzed federal government. We are a nation of people who are equal before the law under a constitution that prevents despots seizing unreasonable power over the citizenry. Or so we thought. The pandemic revealed a disturbing tendency of some elected representatives to impose unprecedented restrictions on their fellow Australians. We saw people being shot with rubber bullets, dozens arrested for peacefully protesting, and millions confined to their homes. Tampering with our Federation is not something we should do lightly. As we saw in the United States yesterday, Western liberal democracies are now being largely run by unelected bureaucracies and the law is being arbitrarily enforced by politicized police forces. The raid on Donald Trump's home is a reminder that we should be seizing power back from governments, not granting them more of it. One reassuring sign that our Federation is still operating within the traditional rules of civility is that my next guest, David Flint, who is the head of the Australians for Constitutional Monarchy, was this week granted a meeting with his supposed nemesis, Assistant Minister for the Republic, Matt Thistlethwaite. Well, we couldn't be a fly on the wall for that meeting, but the next, next best thing is to have him in this studio to tell us about it. Professor Flint, welcome to the show. Welcome, thank you very much. So how did the meeting go, David? Did he offer you a cup of tea in a Platinum Jubilee souvenir teacup? <laughs> no, he did not, though they did offer water, which is very nice of them. He was extremely courteous. He did listen, and that was a great thing. We were making the point that there was a much more important constitutional issue than the ones on the government's agenda, that is the voice and then the republic. And what we said, was that there should be this issue on the agenda, and that is what happened during the pandemic. And during the pandemic, we saw instances which show that there is a path, a pathway to becoming a dictatorship in Australia. We had individual, individual ministers making laws. And this is an extraordinary situation because the minister would make a law without any restriction claiming that this was being made as a regulation under an act of parliament. And some of them were beyond. I have no doubt that some were beyond the power given in the legislation. We had safeguards against that. One was that regulations would be made through the executive council. It wouldn't be the minister who would make them. It would be the governor or governor general, so that there'd be the opportunity of an additional person considering it, and the minister would have to present a case to the governor general or the governor, who would normally approve it. They wouldn't be making a decision on the substance. They'd just be making sure that, firstly, they had the power to adopt the regulation, and secondly, that if any conditions on the exercise of that power were there, and there usually are, that these would be fulfilled. Then there'd be an additional safeguard, and that is that the regulations would then be tabled before both houses of parliament, so there'd be an, op an opportunity for the opposition and the crossbench to deal with that regulation if they thought it were beyond power. 